Next up on the issues, we'll talk to two of our state's top Native American leaders, visit with the now famous Carl Hayden High Robotics team, and hear some music you'll be able to catch at the first annual Phoenix Jazz and Blues Festival. I'm Phoenix City Councilman Tom Simplot, and that's coming up next on the issues. Next up, you won't want to miss it. We'll be talking to the local students who created a champion underwater robot and their teacher. Keep on watching on the issues. Welcome back to On the Issues. I'm City Councilman Tom Simplot. Students from West Phoenix High School just got back from another award-winning competition. They are known as the Carl Hayden High Robotics Team, and their accomplishments are just amazing. In the studio today, we welcome robotics coach and science teacher, Dr. Alan Cameron, and team members Christian Arcega and Lorenzo Santillan. Thanks for being here, guys. Thank you. Alan, let's start with you. Uh, how did this all come about? Uh, my partner, Freddie Legevardi, and I, we teach science, we teach computer science, and I've taught math. It can be a pretty boring subject, but if you can get your hands on it and get kids excited about what math and science can do, they learn the math and science that goes along with robots or amateur radio or underwater vehicles or even automobiles. Incredible. Now, Carl Hayden, we should, we should tell people this. Carl Hayden is actually a magnet program, right? There's two magnet programs. Uh, one is for the computer science magnet, and there's also a marine science magnet there. So you kind of married the two? Yeah, absolutely. So um, w tell us a little bit how the idea came up to enter the first competition. Not this year's, but last year's. Uh, it was just an opportunity that sort of fell in our, in our lap. We, we heard about an underwater robotics competition. We had been doing the land-type robots for three years previous. And we decided, what the heck, let's try it. We wanted some activity to do during the summer. Uh, a lot like sports, we get more out of the kids if we go year-round rather than a three-month season. So we thought, let's try the underwater robotics. We, uh, we can't lose. We know enough to, to build one and, and be competitive to, at some level anyway. Now, we're actually watching some B-roll right now. You, and that's your robot, right? That's Stinky? That's Stinky. That's the underwater robot that is the national champion of all underwater robots in high schools and colleges. Incredible. Christian Lorenzo, you were both on the team, right? Yes. yes. You helped build Stinky? Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay, what's it made out of? What are we looking at here? Uh, That's a PVC pipe uh, with uh, just caps and fittings for underwater purposes so the, the water doesn't leak into the, our system and short out our motors and cameras. And what made you think of what made you think of PVC pipe? Uh, it was right down the street, so like we could get it at Home Depot and stuff like that. And it was cheap for us because we didn't have a lot of money. And let's talk about that. You put this together on a shoestring, right? Uh, pretty much, pretty, yeah. I mean, it, it's got to be expensive to build a computer or a robot. What kind of money are we talking about for you guys? Well, here's the thing. Uh, one of the main, most of our systems we already had from previous years because we participated in FIRST Robotics where we had uh, speed controllers and uh, digital uh, controllers for our robot that we had laying around. So we used that for the ROV, so like the heavy components, like the big ones, like the digital interface that controlled the uh, robots, the motor controllers to change uh, how much we used our motors, we already had. So we really only spent the money on the motors, uh, the frame, and the cameras. That's great. You guys went in as the underdogs, right? Yeah. And you ended up coming out on top. Right. Who'd you beat? Second place MIT along uh, other schools. Say it again. Uh, <laughs> MIT. Say yeah, again. MIT. <laughs> So you guys have got to be like rock stars walking down, down the halls of high school, right? Yeah, it's something like that, I guess. Something yeah. like that. So you guys had a good year this year too, right? Yeah, yeah, we did. Tell us what we have in front of us. Well, this is Adam. This is for a different competition. This one is, a, is a, the first competition for inspiration and recognitions of science and technology. And basically, it's the same message as MATE to get a, a people involved in robotics and stuff like that through competitions. The robot itself uh, wasn't the greatest. We, we were right about in the middle at nationals, but we won the second highest award you can possibly win at the competition overall. And this is an international competition. Yeah, it's yeah. international. So, and I want to make sure we get this right. So last year with the underwater robot with Stinky, you guys took first place yeah. Yeah. nationally. Yes. Yeah. This year, you guys, tell me, took uh, second place. Second place, second place internationally. internationally. That's really cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, what does Adam do? 
Well, basically, this was a defensive robot. The goal of the game was basically just uh, score points, and you would do that by getting some triangles and like lifting them five feet in the air and putting them on top of bigger ones. So what we were thinking is, uh, since it's three on three, what if instead of us making points, we make sure the other team doesn't make points? So that's what that's what why the robot's a big square, because we wanted to be able to push around, and there's scars on the sides from us pushing robots around, and the claw on the front is meant. Uh, because we wanted to have the ability, if we had to, to score some points. We, weren't, we didn't focus on that, but it could do it anyways. Did any other team take a defense sort of game not plan? To the, not to the extent we did, where some teams would have like partly defense and then just mainly scoring points. Cool. Are we going to see a demonstration? Sure. Yeah. Okay. What, what do you want me to do? Uh, why don't you put those weight bags on the arm? Okay. Which, which arm? Down here? Yeah, yeah, right there. Okay. And I want to make sure everybody realizes these are heavy. These things. <laughs> This is from, what, the, the TV uh, set, and they're, what, like 30? 15 pounds, I think, each. each. How many pounds each? 15 pounds. You can put the second one on there, too. I think that's the okay. last Dutchman uh, <laughs> Yeah, there you go. Yeah, there you go. So, uh, so the kids could run around all over the field with whatever they picked up. It's important to, to make the point that uh, the first robotics isn't destroying robots or crushing each other, but it's uh, a lot like football. You want to be blocking. You don't want to be well, pushed don't around. Break anything. Yeah. Without breaking anything. Yeah. Matter of fact, they'd be penalized if they if they broke somebody damaged. else's computer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you deliberately tried to break somebody, you'd be disqualified. And you were telling me before, Christian, that your wheels are even. Oh yeah, this is what's really cool. We wanted to have a, a very good uh, driving ability in order to get around and and like act, do our defense. So what we have is we wanted a lot of traction on the carpet, and we wanted to be able to turn very easily. So what we have in the back, there's four pneumatic tires, which give us grip on the carpet, because that's where the whole field was carpet. And the front, there's uh, two Omni wheels, and basically what it is, these are meant to slide to the sides rather than spin forward. So we have the back ones, and you just turn the front, and they can turn like this. How did you guys come up with that? Actually, we'd seen a few teams use these before, and uh, we wanted to try it out for ourselves, so that's why we put them on the front. Wow. So every year, you have all these teams, they're looking at everybody else's uh, robots, and they're probably taking some stuff away for themselves, right? So they, they took some of your ideas, maybe? Well, the big one that we're really hoping people start taking advantage of is the, is, is the components that we use for our frame. This is fiberglass. Strongest steel per pound, uh, but 80% lighter. And why is steel. lighter important? because it, it gives you more uh, weight to use because you're only allowed to have a robot that weighs 120 pounds or less. Wow. So the, the lighter your frame is, the more room you have and the more uh, weight you have that you can use on your robot. But it also has strength. Yeah, because this, this will not bend or it'll break maybe, but under a lot of pressure. So if you're being twisted, it's not gonna shatter at the moment. Okay, now, oh, you go ahead, Alan. If, if you also yeah. look at it, Carl Hayden High School, like a lot of high schools now, no longer has a machine shop. We don't have the tools, the lathes. And if you look at that, everything can be replaced there with a screwdriver, a wrench, and a hacksaw. Like an erector set. Yeah. Absolutely. Let's talk about the corporate uh, sponsors. Um, it, this is phen phenomenal. Tell me again, what does it cost to build this, this robot? It was five thousand dollars to enter the competition. For every other one you go to, it's five to six thousand dollars. We went to Atlanta, thirteen, well, eighteen people with the airfare. That's seventeen thousand dollars. So it can be expensive, probably cheaper than a football team, but it's it's, it's still it, perhaps more important. The district really doesn't have the funds to support this, so this is all extracurricular. If it wasn't for the sponsors that are there, Intel, Honeywell, etc., uh, and people doing tax credit donations. Uh, we, I guess we'd be reading books about robots. We wouldn't be building them. So it's vitally important to us. Did the notoriety help get your uh, get more corporate sponsors? Uh, we'll see, folks. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good plug. Yeah. So last year, let's go back to Stinky for a second. Last year, you, you built this robot using PVC pipe, right? Yeah. Okay. Tell me why you picked PVC, and did any did any of the other teams decide PVC was the way to go for for future? Well, I, I, I really don't know because we haven't uh, been talking to a lot of teams uh, because we've been busy working on this competition. But I imagine there's a few because there's a lot of there's a lot of good things about PVC. It gives you room to put uh, to place all your wires, so you're not going to have them exposed, so you don't have to worry about something you getting them caught on something. But uh, and it which also is exactly gives, yeah. kind of how you won, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because MIT what got caught up 
on uh, something underwater? Is that it? I really don't know. No? Okay. They, they I don't should know let that. us see their mission and when yeah. we, they were doing it. So okay. we wouldn't know. But uh, there's also it also uh, acts as buoyancy. There's air chambers inside the PVC, which uh, which gives the ability to float on in the water. So okay. our, our whole frame would float underwater without the battery. Okay, which is why you actually, unlike any other team, you put the battery on yeah. the robot. Yeah. Did everyone else look at your robot thinking, uh, boy, you guys have made a big mistake? Uh, actually, I think a few have, a few did because I mean it, you're putting electricity in the water. So it's like, but when you, if you take the proper precautions and stuff, you don't have to worry about it so much. And what were the proper precautions? Well, what we did is we have these, uh, basically what we had is we put the battery inside a waterproof case and we would close that. And there, and we drilled the hole into one of the sides that would fit into the frame itself. So we had all the wire inside and then you would, we would seal that with a, with a gasket and an O-ring. Now, so, I seem to recall reading, you actually had a leak. Yeah. yeah. The night before yeah. the competition. We had a leak consistently. Um, it was a small leak, but we had to fix it. And it was like a little challenge to do that. That would be a lot of pressure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And Alan, what, what's your take on all of this? On the whole thing? Yeah. This is the most exciting thing I've ever done teaching, and I've been in this for 30 years. I've taught elementary school and high school in a college class or two. This has been the most fun I've ever had in my life. Phenomenal. Now, the really cool part, in addition to, of course, all the uh, you know, recognition and, and winning the competition, movie rights. <laughs> you guys, you've sold, who sold the movie rights? It was sold to Warner Brothers, uh, and John Wells, the producer of West Wing and ER, will be the producer, and the script has not been written. We, I tell the kids, you may wind up being a cartoon fish for all you know. They, they can do what they want with the story, but we're real excited about that. They could do anything they want, but come on, just for fun. Who, who's going to play you? Come on, Lorenzo. Um, I don't know any actors right now, so like, uh, I, I don't see a lot of movies. I wouldn't really either. know, but you, you're going to love his. Okay, Alan, who's going to play you? Sean Connery. <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah, he's been saying that the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you stick to a dream. That's right. <laughs> and it pays off. Yeah. So uh, you just got back from Atlanta. I know you've got something coming up next. Tell us about it. The, this year's competition for underwater. Uh, that's going to be June 17th through the 19th at the Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas. And the competition, the underwater part, is actually going to be inside the Nutrient Sea Buoyancy Lab where they train the astronauts. So that's going to be really cool. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. And this year, all your competition, they're looking for you, right? Yeah. There's a lot of competition that wants to take us down. Yeah. I bet they do. We can't sneak in this year. No. 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 And you're going to be up against colleges again. Yeah. 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 MIT will be there, and Carnegie Mellon, which is notorious for their robotics and, and artificial intelligence, will be there. Wow. Amazing. Well, good luck. Um, this is phenomenal. You guys are great. And uh, good luck. Keep me posted. We'll all be watching because we're all going to be rooting for you. Thank you. Thank you. So, all right. Good luck.